Hello. We're now at the second Sunday of Easter, or the Sunday of Divine Mercy. After all, this gospel is the gospel in which Jesus uh, gives the church the power to forgive sins. When he says to the apostles and through the apostles to the whole church, receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. In our first reading, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35, the community of believers was of one heart and mind. Their oneness was out of their unity in the one Lord Jesus Christ over them. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. This scene occurs after the Pentecost, when they have received the Holy Spirit, who gave them great power to help them bring others to believe in Jesus as their Lord. In the Gospel reading, John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, in this Gospel, there's a study of contrasts or opposites. Jesus comes to bring peace to those who are locked, uh, who lock the doors in fear of the Jewish authorities, who had put Jesus to death and who might, might put them to death too. Alone behind those locked doors, they were powerless against the powers of this earth. But Jesus came to empower them with a heavenly power to forgive sins and to go into the world to bring others to Christ. Thomas came to believe because he saw with his own eyes the physical presence of the risen Lord. Lost my place. Uh, To which Jesus says, Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Belief is the central message of this gospel which ends with the words, But these, these words, are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. Not physical evidence, but rather words that testify to the resurrection are given to us, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may have the belief that gives us life in his name. Jesus says in this gospel, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Jesus in his public ministry made it clear that it made no sense to give the fullness of life to the body, yet leave the soul sick in sin. After having lowered a man on a stretcher through the roof, since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd around him. Luke chapter 5, verse 20 reads, When Jesus saw their faith, he said, As for you, your sins are forgiven. In Luke chapter 5, verse 24, Jesus continues, But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said, to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. His forgiveness of us through the sacrament of reconciliation gives spiritual health to a sick soul, so that we may have life in his name. As it says in the Psalm uh, 118, verse 2, let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Going on to the second reading, uh, this will be uh, 1 John, I believe. I didn't write it down correctly. Uh, Let me see now. Yes, it is. It's on the wrong way. Okay, this will be 1 John chapter 5, 1 to 6. This epistle begins. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. Belief in Jesus requires that we are no longer people of the ways of this world, 
but rather are the ways of heaven. In John chapter 3, verse 6, Jesus says to Nicodemus, What is born of flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is spirit. Jesus continues in John uh, chapter 3, verse 7b, You must be born from above. In today's epistle, John continues, For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. Being born of the Father as his sons and daughters demands that we love not only God, but also love his love for us, which is expressed in his loving will and direction over us. Since Jesus Christ is Lord over us, we are subjects of Jesus and not of this world. That victory that conquers the world is our faith, that Jesus is Lord and not this world over us. In other words, the world is not Lord over us. Jesus came through the water of his baptism to begin his work of redemption, and then through the blood of his cross to complete our redemption. We do not have to see with our eyes the actual physically risen body of Christ, because we have the Spirit, who is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. We have the faith that is given to us by the Spirit and not by sight. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, ver I'm sorry, chapter 5, verse 7, Paul wrote, We are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight. How wondrous, what a joy it is not just during the Easter season, but all through the year, to have the Lord as the Lord over us.